Hi everyone, welcome to the highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. 836 days less the Russian invasion of Ukraine. President Volodymyr Zelensky informed in his evening video address that he spoke with the commander-in-chief about the overall situation on the front line. A significant outcome is that the Russian army has failed to execute their Kharkiv operation. Quote, we are currently restraining them to the best of our ability, destroying Russian units that enter our land and terrorize the Kharkiv region. The direction is reinforced and it will be reinforced even more, unquote, said the president. Spokesperson for the Hortetsia Operational Strategic Group of Forces, Nazar Voloshin, earlier informed that Ukraine's troops control most of the city of Vovchansk, Kharkiv Oblast, reports RBK Ukraine. Voloshin further noted that the Russians are building up their group in the north of Kharkiv Oblast, moving additional forces from other areas and trying to relocate units near the state border and involve Russia's air assault forces. There is also information that the enemy is using the tactic of deploying barrier units from among the personnel of the Ahmad units, loyal to Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov, to support its activities. Barrier units, also known as anti-retreat forces, are deployed to prevent retreat or desertion among their own troops. They are positioned behind the battlefield to reinforce discipline and ensure that soldiers remain engaged in combat. Zelensky said that currently the situation is the most difficult in the Donetsk direction. According to the Ukrainian ground forces, soldiers from the 47th Mechanized Brigade are holding back at least three Russian combat brigades on the Pokrovsk front. With huge reserves of manpower, the Russians quickly replenish their huge losses and throw new soldiers into battle again and again. The fighting does not cease for a moment. We would really appreciate if you could recommend us to your friends and family, as well as share information on social media. This way more people would learn about the podcast and truth about Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Bloomberg, in an article titled Putin is running out of time to achieve breakthrough in Ukraine, noted that Russian forces only have limited gains on the battlefield in Ukraine in recent months. And they are beginning to lose ground, reports Ukrainska Pravda. According to the media, Ukraine had managed to stop the Russian offensive when the flow of weapons from its partners began. With Kyiv now taking delivery of billions of dollars in fresh arms from its US and European allies, the window for a Russian breakthrough is narrowing even as it continues to fire missiles and drones at Ukrainian cities, including energy infrastructure. A Russian attempt to open a new front in Ukraine's northeast Kharkiv region already appears bogged down without achieving Putin's goals of creating a buffer zone along the border. Bloomberg further noted that Russian forces have made little headway since capturing the strategically important city of Avdiivka in Donetsk Oblast in February at the price of enormous casualties over months of fighting. They have been trying to capture the critical town of Chasivyar in Donetsk Oblast for many weeks. The experts say that Russia's strategy of depleting Ukraine's forces is very expensive and bloody for the Russian army itself and can lead to excessive exhaustion of forces on the Russian side, which in turn gives Ukrainians a chance to counterattack. Ukraine's defense ministry informed that the armed forces of Ukraine are using over 110 models of Ukrainian-made and foreign vehicles, reports Channel 24. In particular, 60 of them have been adopted for military use over the past five months. The defense ministry says that the range of vehicle categories is quite extensive and includes armored cars, off-road vehicles, trucks, motorcycles and special vehicles. The armed forces vehicle fleet currently includes equipment manufactured in over 20 countries, including the United States, Germany, Sweden, the United Kingdom, Italy and others. Popular off-road vehicles produced by Japanese and European car manufacturers, as well as the world's largest US-made off-road transporter tractor unit for transporting tanks, self-propelled artillery systems and other heavy armored vehicles have been officially approved for use. Thank you for listening to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, we're a commercial initiative of just two people and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the app, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we are getting better. 
We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.